everyone. It's good to be back. Had a week off last week. Not off work, but no show last week. So good to be back. I think this is show 67. Uh, They're racking up, aren't they? And I couldn't do them without my sponsors. So I do want to just thank DDC, um, Evalue Agent and OneCom. I couldn't do this without them. And uh, more on some really interesting work I'm going to be doing with DDC uh, soon, in fact. Morning, Darren. You're first in. Good morning, sir. Good to see you. Um, let's start with, actually, and Darren, you can kick us off, maybe. Let's say hello in the comments. And where are you watching from? Whereabouts are we all? Um, Scott's here as well. Hello, mate. How you doing? I don't want to guess, but I think I know where you're from, Scott. This show, of course, is brought to you from the nerve center uh, that is Didcot near <laughs> near Oxford. Um, Ang Harrod, hello. How are you? Ang Harrod, lovely, lovely human being and member of the team leader community, as is Debbie. Oh, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for joining. Um, as always, please... Um, I'm not being rude. If your comments are not showing, I'm not ignoring you. You've just got to refresh LinkedIn or get someone whose comments are showing to to prompt me. Sometimes there's a bit of a a disconnect, but it's great to see you. Um, Darren, I'm watching from home, which is in Dunfermline in Scotland. Oh, great. Now, you may be interested, Darren, in something that's coming up uh, later on in in the show. Now, maybe you are watching for the first time or you've watched time and time again. Um, If you haven't yet ever posted a comment, please do. It would be great to see who's watching um, and it would be great for you to share where you are watching from. You don't need to give your full postal address and postcode. (laughs) Scott from Swansea. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Oh, look. Quite well, I was going to say quite close. I don't want to start any Swansea Cardiff rivalry, but Debbie is in Cardiff. Morris is here. Hello, mate. Rainy Ramsgate. It is a bit chilly today. It's been lovely, isn't it? But it is a bit chilly. I got a bit cold this morning on my dog walk. And Harrod is, I'm also home today in sunny Newport. Oh, it's sunny where you are. So we have a bit of a Welsh. We've got more. More Welsh and Scottish so far than than English. Um, come on, everybody. Oh, Rob's here. Rob, it's been too long. Sunny Cheshire. It's always sunny where you are, Rob. Just have to look at Rob's face and it makes me smile. Not in a not in a bad not in a bad way. I love Rob. We do need to catch up, Rob. Um, so where are you watching from? The Welsh contingent on board today, I see, says Scott. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think I've said this before, but um, I used to live in my my dad was in the RAF, so we got posted around, and I lived in Anglesey, the island off the north coast of Wales. And I was about ten, and we went to the only school that they had there was Welsh speaking school. Uh, I didn't speak any Welsh, obviously, and I can still remember Bobo Bach, which means naughty boy because I kept getting in trouble. That wasn't because I was naughty. It was I had no idea what was going on. But I did ace English, top of the class in English. (laughs) Matt's here. Chilly Winchester, shorts away back to jeans. No, I've still got shorts on, Matt. It's great to see you. Ben, hello, mate. Not joined one of these for a while. It's good to see you back. Gorgeous Devon. It's where my family are from. My mum and dad live near Sidmouth, Newton Poppleford. And of course, I used to spend a lot of time down in Exeter. So it is great to see you all 100%. Oh, yes, Rob, we do need to catch up. So we've got a few more English joining. Uh, Welsh uh, the, you Welsh is still winning, winning, but I can still count in Welsh. Um, Ian Dietry, Pedball, Pimp Quest, Scythe with now Deg. <laughs> So it's, it, it, the education wasn't lost on me from what I remember, other than getting in getting in trouble. Uh, it's great to have you all here. Please do keep adding your, your comments in. Now, I mentioned, uh, has a long history of producing legends to this part of the world. Well, exactly. Uh, 
you yourself included, Ben, of course. Devon, aka Heaven. I love Devon. Um, I mentioned at the start that uh, there is going to be some interesting news uh, regarding DDC. Now, for some of you that know, uh, I have been involved with something called DDC Discusses, and there is there are great, great, great events where the academic world meets the contact center and customer experience world. And I have some great news, but I won't do it justice. But my very, very good friend, who I've uh, strong armed into doing this, is going to join us now. Here she is. Hello, Christy. Hi. <laughs> strong armed is the right word. I am totally uncomfortable at the minute, but. Well, Hi. Ben, ben <laughs> mentioned legends, and I, I have to tell everybody that Chrissy is an absolute legend. Um, she's been such a massive help for me in my journey of being self-employed and is a very, very good friend. But Chrissy, we're not just here to talk about our friendship and things that I'm not allowed to mention. Um, no. Can you tell us all about what DDC discusses and what is happening with it now? Because I think this audience are going to love it. Okay, thanks. So, um, so yeah, so DDC Discusses, as you mentioned, was a bit of a brainchild of ours um, uh, about two years ago now. It took a few months to get up and running. Um, but we really felt that there was a gap in sort of academia and science. There's lots of people doing transformation, but we, we really wanted to kind of get to the bottom of the, the research that was being done. So um, the first person we engaged with was a lady called Liz Stokoe. And she was fabulous. You were at that event. Um, I kind of fanboying. I, I did <laughs> fanboy at that because Liz Stoko <laughs> wrote a book called Talk, which I'd read years ago. And when you said, oh, we're going to do this, I love the idea. And you said our first academic person that will be there will be Liz Stoko talking about conversational analytics. And I got a bit starstruck. <laughs> And you did. It was funny. But she's agreed to come back. So you obviously didn't stop okay. her that much. So that's, I think that's the restraining order was only for a year. So, <laughs> <laughs> And only in the London area as well, which is great because we're moving to Manchester. So it's all good. Um, but yeah, so and the events have been really good. We held them at the British Library and we had it. So we had a great venue um, and they were they were well attended. I think the, the key thing we kind of noticed was that people struggled to get in and out of London um so we've, we've sort of changed and we've moved them out now so we're holding our first one in manchester in june on the 20th of june if anyone's interested in coming um oh she's she is brilliant morris she is brilliant you'll have to come and see her um but yeah no so um so that's in june but um i guess what i'm here to talk about t today yes beautifully beautifully played martin um you're welcome it is <laughs> it's like it's like we'd practiced um is um is this is our is our kind of joint um project in finding up and coming new research students that are working in the areas of customer service and contact center because we we really want to hear from them um and we've decided that the next iteration of this kind of ddc discusses working with get out of rap is going to be um building a platform for for your research students to to get their name out there we we we've we've worked with liz and she's brilliant but we know that there will be lots of people out there that are doing research that don't have the same sort of platform of ted talks and um websites etc that liz does so this is our opportunity to find the new and up and coming versions of liz stoko and if you think about I, i'll never forget having a chat with so after liz you had and I may get his name wrong because I just started referring to him as Dr. Saul. Saul. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> um, he he was so pleased to be invited to the uh, DDC Discusses because he said, when you think about it, why hasn't the academic world and science been linked to CX and contact centres far more or earlier and, uh, and far more prevalent than it currently is because one of the things that we have in abundance is data he said i just i just want to get my hands on your data about what do customer contacts look like what a, you know if you think about um some of those first ddc discusses were around conversational 
analytics and how we really analyze how we're engaging with customers day in, day out. He said, you guys are the best industry for us to be able to talk about our theories and test them out. Um, and what, what I love about this new iteration is, like you say, this is for maybe people doing PhDs for um, some university faculties that have got some really interesting stuff that they're testing that can be applied to our world and customer experience. Uh, and, and the call out to everyone watching and who, whether you're watching live or whether you watch this recorded is even if you don't know someone in the academic world, you must know someone who might know someone. So do you have a link to your local university or college? Is one of your family members involved at uni who might be able to put somebody in touch with, and I'm guessing, Chrissy, that's the key question. How do people get in touch? How do they say, oh, you know what? I might, ha I might know someone. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So, um, so we're going to put a post out um, shortly after after this. Um, myself and Martin. Oh, thanks, Matt. Um, and we're going to put a post out shortly, and there'll be like a just a very short form for people to complete, and you can complete it on behalf of somebody or send the link on. The link is a public link, so um, and it's just asking a little bit of detail about the the um, research that people are doing, um, sort of the subject title of the research, and then a little bit about the content of it. Uh, and then some contact details so that we can get in contact with them and talk about their research and, and how it might um, work with it within our space. Um, and then I guess the next step from there is that, that we hope that um, we'll then get them on a, a podcast with you, Martin, to have a little bit of a deeper conversation so it's it's a great opportunity for them giving them a bit of a platform to to you know raise the profile of their research um and it's a great opportunity for us to maybe find the next the, you know the next big bit of research so yeah it's exciting and the next maybe liz stoko but yeah just just talking about her you mentioned as well that you are there's going to be another ddc discusses can you just share the details of that again yeah, sure. So um, again, there's a post about it on LinkedIn, but it's um, it's Thursday, the 20th of June. Uh, and it's at the, um, it, um, we talk about inner geeks, my inner history geek is about to come out because I'm so excited. It's at the Imperial War Museum in Manchester, which if you haven't been, I shouldn't say this, but if you haven't been, come for that, just for that, because it's it's an amazing sort of experience to have a little wander around. But yeah, so um, Liz is coming to do... Um, a similar conversation to the one that she had before um but it's not you know i think for anyone that's been i hope we've really kind of shown you that it's not just liz preaching at us it's very much a discussion you know it, it got quite a heated debate um i felt quite sorry because some people had attended thinking it was going to be about conversational analytics and some people had attended from conversational analytics companies and and she kind of put up the this sort of opening gambit, which was that, that they're all, you know, not the greatest things in the world, you know, they're not going to change the world. So we had some quite heated debates, but it, it was it was really good. And I think we all came away having learned quite a lot that day. Um, so it was, it was really good. Oh, it was great. They, they, they've they all been good. And we also had um, Dr. Phoebe Asquith on uh, wellness as well. And um agent wellness and some of the stuff that they were doing so there's and when you think about our world there's so many different topics so it isn't necessarily we're not just looking for academics that might be involved in conversation or customer experience but they could be involved in leadership in mm -hmm. well-being in uh the mental side of things because there's it, it's all of that really isn't it I, I guess that's the point, isn't it? We 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 have looked at it from one specific angle, but the reason we're going out to this brilliant network of of ours, the you know the contact center industry, is you you guys will know what is interesting to you and what you would want to hear discussed. So if you're interested in hearing it discussed, the chances are we're interested in in putting that out as a as a piece for you. So yeah, by all means, there's there's you know there's no silly ideas every every idea is valid so we, we just want to hear from you and i think you're trying to blow my brain on the next one 
because not only is Liz going to be there again, <laughs> but it's at the Imperial War Museum. And yeah. I, I was giddy running around that. And the girls here were like, oh, God, he's going to bore <laughs> he's going to bore us about, about history. And uh, but I can't wait. Great, great location. And um, got a comment from Morris. I've promoted the science for 20 years. And there's only people like Liz who are finally getting past the lack of interest in science. I will have a couple of recommendations about the academics who interest me at the moment. Brilliant. That's great. Brilliant. Thanks, Morris. Um, so that, just to clarify then, so you, we will be both doing a post and in that post there'll be a form. But I'm assuming people can still just contact you on LinkedIn anyway. Yeah. You yeah, know me, I'll me. talk to anyone on LinkedIn. So yeah, anyone wants to contact me, it's always good, it's always good to hear to, from people anyway. So um, it's, um, yeah, on LinkedIn or even on the phone, you know, just, just get in contact. It's great to hear from anybody about them. Um, and I hope to see lots of you at the, uh, at the Manchester event. Brilliant. And uh, also maybe there are people that are going, you're going to a couple of events soon so people could meet you up in person Christy aren't you yeah I'm at I'm at uh, utility week live shortly I've got to zip in the car down to Birmingham I, I'm in Belper by the way so you said where is everyone from today I'm from Belper not not sunny Wales unfortunately but um but yeah heading heading down to uh, Birmingham shortly so if anyone happens to be at UW then um then yeah get in touch and uh, be good to meet up we're holding networking drinks there later so be good to meet anybody there that wants to have a chat other than and that then... yeah um, and then afterwards, you'll be seeing this lady. I will. Hello, lovely, <laughs> wonderful Kerry and Danny. Actually, we've we're we're painting the town red on Thursday evening. Uh oh, look out! Yeah, watch out, London. <laughs> <laughs> now we've kind of raised. We, we've gone highbrow with academic world. So the longer me and you stay talking, we're going to lower <laughs> the tone. <laughs> I'll go then. <laughs> Christy, uh, thank you very much, and for um, I, I love what you do genuinely because I think it 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 really kind of shows the professionalism of our our industry, and we can only learn from the more time we spend with the two worlds meeting the academic world, the science world, and and what we do is to everyone's betterment. So I applaud really and uh, support what you do as well. Thank you, we appreciate that. Well, thank you very day. much. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye. Well, I do hope you thank you, Morris, as well. And for anyone else, like I say, you might not know someone. And Aman, good to see you. Uh, you might not know someone yourself, but you might know someone that knows someone, right? And as Chrissy said, this is a chance for maybe people that haven't got the same profile and platform as uh, people like authors like Liz Stoko and doctors um, to, to really get a platform and to share their work and for us all to be interested in it. Yeah, Darren, I agree. Thank you very much, um, Chrissy. And Kerry says, if I'd have known you were at Utility Week, I would have joined. Ah, oh, that's great. Kerry is, of course one of the team for get out of rap football club because we are taking part in the call and contact center cup uh, i say taking part we're, we're we're aiming to win it right kerry um i believe there's a couple of spaces left i've got one, uh, leon i think um i will be contacting you like gareth southgate i'm having to make some difficult selection choices at the moment um talking of football uh as for those of you that are interested, the Euros are coming up. I would love to do a Get Out of Rap TV Euro sweepstakes. So there's 24 spaces. Now, the QR code, I'm never going to get this right. <laughs> the QR code is a link to my um, Just Giving page because I am running the London Marathon. Um, I know there's 341 days to go. Uh, I haven't started a full training plan yet, but I am starting running three times a week. Uh, luckily, I've got a place through Action Aid, which is a great charity for girls and women across the world. Um, and I would, as part of the fundraising, if you make a donation, and it can be anything, one pound, two pounds, I don't mind, 
Uh, but if you use that QR code, uh, make a donation, uh, you will be entered into a Euro 24 sweepstake, which I will do next Tuesday, as long as we get 24 entrants. Um, I will spin the wheel and you'll get so you'll get given a team. If that team wins the Euros, I will get you either an England or a Scotland shirt, I would say, or a shirt of your choosing if you're from Wales, maybe a Welsh shirt, even though, unfortunately, uh, they didn't qualify. Um, I'm, and I'm not saying that to rub it in. Let's just say I will buy you a football shirt. You will, you will win a football shirt. So I would um, love to have as many entrants as possible, ideally 24. Uh, all you have to do is follow the QR code. Uh, if you then sponsor me, I will add your name and we'll do the sweepstake next week. Um, definitely, we have to beat CCP after me giving it the big and to mark. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we do. Um, hey, Spencer, how you doing? Have you thought about AI, Martin, while you're training for a marathon next year? Um, I I haven't, Spencer, but I am running today, so maybe I will think if if AI can help um, take the pain away from my knees and. <laughs> then yes, I will be thinking about AI. Uh, but as I say, I'd love to have, I'd love to do a Get Out Rap TV Euro 24 sweepstake and help support ActionAid, which is an amazing charity. You'll be hearing more about the the London Marathon. If you follow me on TikTok, I'm doing a vlog of every run that I do that also includes um, Hugo. I will share the Just Giving link as well um at some point yeah don't worry i'm gonna bang on about this for 341 days so there'll be plenty more opportunities but i would i would love to do a sweepstake i get very excited about the the euros um matt thank can recommend trainers one ai driven custom training plan oh great yeah that's great uh, cause I know that I'm too far out to start like a 16 or 20 week, um, training plan. Um, but I'm, I'm enjoying it so far and the family are not enjoying it because it's all I talk about. <laughs> uh, but Matt, thank you. I might be contacting you, Matt, um, about more more tips. I still haven't got proper running shoes. I want to get my a gait analysis done uh, to make sure I get the right ones. Still kind of on a football theme. Um, I just want to point you in the direction of a masterclass that's happening in the um, team leader community. And just seeing some of your names here, if you're ever interested in coming to do a masterclass in our team leader community or even maybe you want to join the community there's 370 members um we have ang harrod and debbie um there's also it's not just team managers team leaders there's aspiring agents there's senior leaders if you'd like to join just let me know but maybe you'd like to come and do a masterclass but the next one happening this friday if you are in the community uh, Martin Pemberton, an ex-professional footballer, and his lovely partner, Naomi, who is an expert coach, they are going to deliver a masterclass on how you can be mentally match fit. And that's dealing with stress, anxiety, and how to have an effective uh, relationship. Um, hey, Jordan's here, superstar. Hey, MT, looking forward to the next masterclass. Me too. Um Martin and Naomi have both been on the podcast. And as with a lot of people that come on the podcast, you end up becoming friends. And I have to say, Martin um, has been so kind and helpful. He's And he's very funny, as is Naomi. Um, and Naomi's brother actually came on the, the podcast as well, which is, so there was some sibling rivalry there. Uh, they are brilliant. And um, it's going to be a great hour they're giving their time up for nothing because that's them all over. Not giving their time up for nothing, but they're just lovely, lovely human beings. Amazing. Thank you, Rob. Amazing place for contact center people. Can confirm. 
I've been annoying people in the TLC for a while now, and it's really beneficial. You are not annoying people at all. Debbie, brilliant. Thank you very much. That's great. Uh, so, yes, maybe this might be the thing that prompts you to want to join the team leader community. Um, check out Eddie Izzard's Marathon Man. Oh, I mean, he that was amazing, Morris, wasn't it, what he did? 27 marathons. No, <laughs> it's just phenomenal. Uh, that and, of course, the hardest geezer, I think he was called, that ran the length of Africa recently. It's just phenomenal what people can can do. So, um, yeah, I'm not there yet. Maybe I'll do this one and then I want to do 26 more. Have you considered taking your call centre chair to the London Marathon branded with your logo? Can you imagine seeing yourself on the BBC? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> what, you mean someone that could push me around the, the marathon? That would be brilliant, Spencer. You are very creative, my friend. Uh, oh, Ang Harrod. I love I love the TLC. Log in every shift and get great ideas and tips. Everyone is there to share their knowledge and lift each other up. Oh, thank you. That that actually gives me goosebumps. Um, because that is exactly why I set the community up. That's made me feel a bit emotional. Thank you very much. In a in a happy way. Um, okay. It doesn't seem like Danny's with us today, but I know how much he loves a, a VT. So it is one of our favourites. <laughs> It's the read-along. Now, if you remember, we are doing Contact Babel's uh, 2024 UK Contact Centre Decision Makers Guide, a great, great um, survey and analysis and sharing of everything that's going on in our industry as a result of talking to not only contact centre decision makers but customers as well. And we are on, we're just coming to the end of, if you remember, analytics. So when the decision makers were asked about the usefulness of analytics for improving CX, you can see the dark green there is very useful, yellow, somewhat useful, pink or salmon, a little useful, red, not useful, uh, and black is do not use analytics for this. So Checking the quality of customer interactions, 48% said it is very useful. Identifying business process failures, 47%. Identifying dissatisfied customers, 45%. It would be interesting to see and to hear from people. If you're using uh, analytics to identify your dissatisfied customers, what are you doing? Are you giving them to a special team to follow up? Are you? Does that prompt some immediate action, some redress maybe, or contacting those customers? Because I think that is such a good way of still using outbound. Uh, so you're contacting customers to say, look, we've analyzed some of the contact. We don't think you are happy. We want to make you happy. How can we help? Uh, turning people around. Assisting with customer journey analytics and identifying opportunities for self-service. So having had a look at that, what do you what do you think, Rob? Oh, I'm so glad I know you, Rob. I live for this, says Rob. Jordan loves a VT. Whoop, whoop. Um, I've got another one for next week, but you'll have to stay tuned because next week is going to be very, very special. Um, but when you're looking at this, the usefulness of analytics for improving CX. Is there anything missing, do you think? Or does this kind of um, mirror what you would expect? Is it confirmation of what you would uh, expect? Nothing really kind of stands out, does it, that is being missed there in terms of what are people using, or the usefulness of analytics for improving um CX. I guess you could ask the question. Analytics is great. We it's so much better than it ever was, but we're still not seeing an uplift in our kind of CX scores from a public point of view. And I, I and I wonder why that might be. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Now let's have a look at 
what effect does interaction analytics have on the customer experience? 41% said it is a strongly positive effect. 34% said somewhat positive. 24% said neutral. And again, I think when I look at that, I think the word that comes to mind is opportunity. Um, now, Rob. Rob says analytics provide opportunities to resolve outstanding issues, targeting coaching for agents. Now, that was probably the one that was missing, Rob, wasn't it? Good spot. Quickly identifying contact for QA scoring if done properly. And of course, Rob is a subject matter expert in lots of different things in our world and is now and has been an evaluator agent for uh the last six months i guess rob so you're perfectly matched and placed to be able to talk about um how this can be done properly uh because i love what you guys do genuinely and of course i love you <laughs> so great point this one of course i think definitely speaks to opportunity why isn't the percentage much higher for strongly positive is it that there's still work to do um does this chart refer to real-time analytics or post contact sorry it's it's post contact rob i i should have said um but this is post contact um what do you think it would say if it was real-time analytics then would it be would it be similar or would it be would it be different whilst you answer that we have coming to the end of the analytics section and we're now moving on to i guess something that we've all talked about it previously and that is self-service the great deflection <laughs> so this is the use of self-service by contact center size uh, the yellowy orange is an average size, uh, the average, sorry. Light blue is a small contact center. The darker blue is medium and the darkest blue is large. And I hope you can see that. But FAQs is by far the most commonly uh, common area for self-service, followed by account-specific web self-service followed by touch tone IVR, then virtual agents, chatbots, uh, free text search of documents on the website, access to user community and crowdsourced answers, automated speech recognition, visual IVR, or none of the above. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, the touch tone IVR Large contact centers uh, definitely seem to have a lot more use of it, but some of the others, far and above the average. Um, let Spencer, I recall that two weeks ago there were issues with the e-security data at the airport in the United Kingdom. I wonder how the customer experience will be assessed when the, when the entire service is analyzed during the holiday break and what can be done to improve it. Yes, yeah, so Spencer, good point. So these uh, these events lend itself to analysis and then hopefully corrective action, don't they? It will be interesting to see. Strange categories. <laughs> it, they are, aren't they? Um, what would you suggest, Matt, would be better ones? Um, I know Steve Morrell, the guy behind Contact Babel, is always interested in uh, how things can be better reflected from the data that's gathered. Um, bit of a mix of technologies and outcomes tasks. Yeah, it, it, it is, isn't it? It's um, trying to get everything of, of self-service, I guess, all on the, all on the page at once. Um, does anything stand out for you there in terms of uh, I, I look at something like a, a visual IVR. Um, do you think that we are going to see an uplift in that usage? Are people going to be more and more comfortable uh, having vi either video calls or visual IVRs? 
I'd love to see this by industry, not just size. I suspect there would be big differences. Lots of trust involved with self-serve, and it depends on the reason for the contact or risk of service failure impact. Very true. Um, I meant gate. My fault. Fat fun. <laughs> You're forgiven. I mean, look at that. Walls banger there. Um, probably separate what they are trying to achieve from how they try to do it. Great point. What are you trying to achieve? How are you trying to do it? Matt, that's great. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really good point. And this, Rob, is, is excellent, isn't it? Is, and that kind of lends itself to customer behavior. The extent to which you are willing to use self-serve is going to depend on the, the reason for the contact or the risk of service failure. So, you know, I, am I likely to use self-serve if I have a real concern with HMRC, for example? Um, probably not. I'd like the reassurance of speaking to someone. Um, biggest use is a simple action, no risk. Yeah, exactly. Ordering something or um, I just don't see visual IVRs being a thing. Better to spend the money on an app or a website. Very, very true. Very true. So we're a long way off that um, happening. We know, don't we, that you know, voice is still prevalent and doesn't seem, despite clickbait headlines, to be going to be going anywhere. Its use has barely dropped over the last ten to fifteen years. So I'm I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one, Matt. As I'm with you on this one, uh, Rob. Um, let's have a look for why people drop out of telephony self-service. So these were the reasons that were suggested. And then the respondents uh, were asked, oh, hang on. Couple here on visual IVR is reflected of the number of people using it. Time will tell. I see it as a positive to give customer options as long as it's choice. Yes, Rob, love it. Um, Morris says visual IVR is probably worse CX now because AI based IVR and chat doesn't have question trees. Press one for X. Morris, you are a very, very clever man and I value your input always. Um, obviously the big difference between things that need identification and an authentication. This is a published author talking an expert on the subject. Matt is super, super knowledgeable. His book is over there in my cabinet. I thoroughly recommend it. Um, and I thought of you, there's a great gift you can use, Matt, actually. I'm going to send it to you. It's brilliant. I thought, oh, if I was Matt, I'd post this. So I, I, will, I will send it to you later. Um, so why are people dropping out of telephony self-service? So the bottom one, the customer does not trust the system and wants reassurance. 23% strongly agree. 49% agree. There you go. There's that. I don't trust it. I want reassurance. Um, no idea how I'm getting these, the downward uh, thumbs. Um, followed by too many IVR options. Again, this is a subject that's come up on this show a few times. 18% strongly agree, 24% agreed. But by far, uh, oh, actually, look at that. The self-service functionality does not offer what they need. 9% agree, strongly agree, 62% agree. This is the reason that customers are abandoning telephony self-service um, and followed by excessive security questions. That's interesting. There's that call out for trust and reassurance. And there's also a gap in functionality does not offer what they need. And this is those kind of, are we talking the complex tasks? Um, I would love to see a world where call centers have time. <laughs> Allowing us to interact with real people instead of chatbots due to security concerns. Maybe we should keep an eye out for Scotty. What do you reckon? Love a Star Trek reference. Uh, teleportation, I'm, 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 I'm sign me up. Um, this technology has been here for so long. 
we're clearly executing things really badly too often. I'm amazed, Rob, like you probably are, the amount of contact centers that still haven't, that don't regularly review what that first interaction looks like with uh, with the customer and, and what is it like for them? Because this is telling us there is still, as you've said here, a problem in execution. Um, I think we probably need to ask customers these questions rather than the contact center decision makers, managers, yes. Uh, it would have been one where it would have been nice to see where um, customers were with this one. It wasn't one of the sections that had a customer uh, response. There is some decent academic. Oh, yes. Plug for early discussion. Thank you on some of these issues. Very, very true, especially around, you know, the feelings of wanting, of needing further trust you know be, you, there's a lack of trust um there's a lack of reassurance aman uh, queries are far too complex and ivr options are limited to specifics yeah very true you know how can how often do when we as customers interact with people i'm more often than not i'll hit other if for a, a, what's the other you know so many things fall in the other box don't they uh certainly from my point of view when I'm contacting companies, it might be slightly related to one of the options, but I have an additional bit that I want to talk about. So I will wait for the other option. And I wonder how many people also fall into the to the same boat. Um, okay. Proportion of callers that have tried to answer their own queries through web self-service before calling. Um, interesting and suspicious not to see the reason channel shift forced on customer and not what they wanted yeah yes rob you're you're right to be suspicious and interested um what do we think of this so the proportion of customers so more than 50 percent eight percent said that more than 50 percent of customers had tried to answer their own queries on using self-service and then were forced into calling less than 10 percent uh 32 percent fell into that category 38 percent fell into the 11 to 25 percent 22 percent fell so 30 percent if you take uh 50 percent and more or 26 percent and more that's 30% of all the respondents said that customers had tried to answer through self-service and then were forced into calling. Again, to Matt's point, I bet if you ask customers this, it's going to be higher. Um, hi, Nick. How you doing? Self-service should be customer convenient. I guess through the IVR, it cannot be. Um <laughs> Carrier pigeons. I'm sure that's... You've mentioned carrier pigeons before. Um, put Kirsty, hello. Putting a human voice on automated payment lines goes a long way. Consistency also builds trust in the in the calling experience. Great point, but it's a far cry from where it should be. Thanks, Kirsty. Uh, Morris, IVR can be used well to do a bit of automation before passing the right customer to the right agent with the information. But I'm always annoyed when I'm told in an IVR to check the website I have just come from so true odd way to present these also not sure anyone has good enough analytics to know yeah it's probably just opinion do you reckon matt um because yeah you're right how would they know the customers maybe they've got, got that journey um interesting comments yes very true rage good to see you uh talking of interesting comments in 2001 telling people you had a website was useful in 2024 yeah our website's useful so we are approaching your chance to choose <laughs> there he is 
I was going to say the person I'll be walking later. He's not a person. Um, whose comment do you think I should feature in the newsletter that will be out tomorrow, probably, maybe even today if I pull my finger out? Um, so of all the comments, uh, I will share as many as possible because you're always, as Rachel said, interesting. Um, but whose comment do you think should be highlighted in my newsletter? Please say now. And whilst you're thinking, can I just remind you of this? Please do get in touch with Chrissy, or you can try, or myself. I'm happy to pass the um, details on. And also, it would be great if you could uh, join in the Euro 24 sweepstake. Just use that QR code or have a look for me on just giving uh, for anything one pound two pounds uh will enter you for the euro 24 sweepstake if we get 24 we will do it next week live amanda's here hey amanda that's how my gran would describe a twin tub <laughs> versus an automatic washing machine that is probably a late entry for comment of the comment of the show amanda that's brilliant um but who else who do you think which comment do you think I should highlight in in the newsletter? If there isn't one that uh, stands out, I'm just going to try and do as many as possible. Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, but yes, please do. Join in the sweepstake if possible and uh, help me raise money for ActionAid. Uh, please do as well. Join me on next week's show. There will be one next Tuesday. I know there wasn't one last Tuesday. Uh, there will be one next Tuesday, which again follows another bank holiday, which is great. <laughs> we love them, don't we? Although being self-employed, I did forget. And I had a couple of meetings scheduled in also with um, other self-employed people. And then we both went, oh, hang on. Uh, we shouldn't be meeting. Okay. Def Spencer's voting for Matt. Um, <laughs> carrier pigeon comment would have to peak interest. Oh, very good, beak interest. <laughs> but guys, look, it's been great to spend this um, nearly fifty minutes with you. Thank you, Chrissy, for coming on and uh, joining me in the in the in the studio. Thank you all for uh, watching. Uh, I, it's always interesting. I always love spending time with you. And I do hope that you can uh, join me next Tuesday. Um, LinkedIn doesn't let you kind of keep a recurring thing going. So look out for the the event. I will probably send you uh, an invite. Uh, thank you all very much and have a lovely rest of the week.